Michael, thanks for joining us and thanks for your patience. So in, this session was supposed to be presented by Dr. Sarah Ferguson. Sarah is a wildlife veterinarian in uh, the Uganda Conservation Coordinator for the Giraffe Conservation Foundation. Um, Sarah coordinates GCF's Giraffe's Conservation Activities across Uganda. Um, and unfortunately, Sarah is stuck in the field um, in Chad with limited internet. So Julian will be here and will present on her behalf. Julian is co-director, co-founder of the Giraffe Conservation Foundation. Julian co coordinates all giraffe conservation efforts. Like that's a lot. That's a lot of work for you, Julian. I'm so proud. He is the founder and co-chair of the IUCN SSC Giraffe and Okapi Specialist Group the conservation advisor for the EAZA, Giraffe EEP, and has 20 years of experience in species and habitat ecology, conservation and land management. Julian holds a PhD in biological science from the University of Sydney, Australia, based on his initial work in Namia, and the ecology of the desert dwelling giraffe in Namibia's no Northwest. Now that's a lot. Um, in this session, <laughs> Uh, he's going to be talking about groundbreaking work in Uganda to secure a future for Numbian giraffes. We learned before there's different types um, using a holistic approach that involves local partner partnering with communities and working within conservation. Thanks for being here today, Julian. Thanks, Luciana. That's absolutely brilliant to be here. G'day, everyone. Um, it's exciting to have you guys all with us online uh, as Steph and Arthur have already talked you through a whole host of stuff. I get to do the exciting stuff and uh, talk about what Sarah does and the, her team on the ground in Uganda. So to the next slide there, James. So as highlighted, unfortunately, Sarah, or Dr. Sarah Ferguson, wasn't able to present, but she sent me this photo this morning uh, to say that actually she is really doing some work. Well, doesn't quite look it. She looks pretty clean and neat there. But she's in Sakuma National Park, Chad, which is an amazing place. It's really home to the, the majority of uh, Cordofan giraffe in the wild. And we've been working closely with African Parks Network there uh, over a couple of years, and she's doing a little bit of work there. Next slide. And as you can see, this is literally a photo of her this morning. Uh, she had the dart gun out. Uh, she darted that female giraffe. She swears she hit it through those trees and brought it down. Um, she put a GPS satellite tag on it. So hopefully over the coming years we'll be able to follow this and a number of other giraffe and she's while on the ground she's working with a good partner also dr pete morkel uh, also from here in namibia doing some elephant rhino lion work so yeah i don't know how much she really wanted to miss this talk but uh, she seems to be having a lot of fun so really let's get into it with the next slide so what we want to present today is a little bit about our work in uganda we've been working as a partnership with uganda wildlife authority since 2013 and over the last eight years, it's become a really a true giraffe conservation success story on the continent. Next slide. Through our joint efforts, we've been able to uh, essentially double the range of giraffe in Uganda. Historically, it had been reduced quite a lot down to due to civil war and unrest, um, but we've been able to help create a whole bunch of new parks um, or parks that exist with giraffe now, um, bringing them back to where they used to begin, uh, used to live. Uh, so that's been really exciting. But importantly, that's just, you know, sort of what's called the sexy side of it. We've been working closely on the ground with lots of communities, education programs, with lots of different partners who implement the work on the ground. And importantly, it has to be a collaborative effort. If we're truly going to save giraffe in the wild, and in particular in Uganda, where they're essentially limited to national parks, we need to work with not just the wildlife authority, but all the community around it. Next slide. So much of day-to-day -day work of Sarah and her team in Uganda focuses on Murchison Falls National Park in Uganda. It's the largest park in the country and it's bordered uh, on the northwest with DRC, the Democratic Republic of Congo. And it has this little tiny river running through it. You might have heard of it. It's called the Nile. So it's a pretty amazing place. It's a beautiful big savanna. And importantly, it's home to the majority of the critically endangered Nubian giraffe, which is a type of northern giraffe. So it's of high priority to both maintain and be able to conserve the habitat and the giraffe and other wildlife that live in this area. Next slide. So we're incredibly lucky to work with uh, the Uganda Wildlife Authority. And, you know, we have such an amazing partnership 
Um, you can see a whole bunch of folks here on the ground that we work with. On the one side, we have Dr. Eric, who's been the main veterinarian and running the park in Murchison Falls through to a whole bunch of ranges. Um, and, you know, I can see little Jonathan there. He's awesome when he gets on a giraffe. He's a little guy with a big heart and a massive spirit. But uh, interestingly, we found if we're going to move this uh, program forward in Uganda, we had to hire a whole host of Ugandans. So on the far right, or maybe your left, depending on the screen, uh, is our veterinarian that, who works for GCF on the ground. So his name is Patrick Okello. Um, he's, you know, been building his skills over the last year or two in wildlife medicine on the ground. And by having him on the ground, working with rangers, we're really able to ramp up the efforts we can do to do daily patrols, anti-poaching, and be effective conservation management of these giraffe before things get too worrisome. Next slide. So one of the biggest issues we have is wire snares. And a lot of people ask, well, what is a wire snare? And if you look at the photo, you know, with the, the round snare, the beautiful blue background, you can see it's like a noose tripe, you know, noose trap, basically. And, you know, it's normally set upon an, uh, a path or in a tree where an animal can get its neck, leg or body stuck in it. Um, and unfortunately, this can then tighten around the body part and it can lead to strangulation of that body part which of course can lead to potential death. Um, and these are set by poachers uh, who live often around it. We've got, as we said, DRC next door, but there's a lot of communities who are struggling. And obviously there's a lot of animals out there for, that look like food. Um, so it's not great, it's not nice, um, and, but it's pretty easy to set because it's just a piece of wire. And these wires are often picked up from disused tires on the side of the road. Yeah, it's amazing. In your tires that you drive your cars, there's actually wire that makes these wire snares. They also snares come from bike cables or fencing wire or winch cables. Um, so they're pretty cheap and easy to make. They're lightweight. And, you know, in a night, you know, it's been recorded that they can set hundreds of these snares in just one night. And if you look at the other photo of the snare, it's quite interesting. There's a little yellow piece of fabric and it could be a plastic bottle or it could be something else. But there's essentially an honor system in poachers and that each post poacher will tag their snare. So when they come along, they know who it is. So it's pretty sad, but it's simple and it's an organized system. And it's something we're trying to work at to both prevent um, when it happens, but also now looking at before it happens. Next slide. We do a bunch of anti-poaching work on the ground and look for these snares before it actually entraps those animals. And you can see in the back of these I don't know, you can call it a bucky, a ute, a truck, whatever you want to call it. There's loads of these snares out there. And so once we see them out in the field, when we're doing these sweeps with uh, the Uganda Wildlife Authority, there's other partners like Snares to Wares out there. Um, they also are helping collect these, bring them back um, into one place that uh, obviously stop the animals from getting, you know, snared or entrapped and, uh, you know, take them out of the environment. We put them in a big location. I think that's probably it. the next slide. Um, the Ugandan Wildlife Authority have this armory where all of this snares, but also other equipment, you know, that can be used for poaching, different types of traps and spears and whatnot. It all comes into this big armory area and every year it gets destroyed so it can't go back and be used in the wild again. Next slide. So, Despite, you know, our teams being out in the park and we're regularly trying to find these animals before they're being snared or find the snares as well, um, unfortunately, the poachers, you know, are doing a good job in finding animals. Um, that's sad, but, you know, the target is actually not giraffe. It's mostly smaller antelope like Ugandan cob or hartebeest, um, looking for bushmeat for substance. Um, but unfortunately, they're also indiscriminate. They're killing and they entrap any animal that walks through them. So if you just press the slide button again there, James, if you look right down the bottom there, there's actually a snare around the left back leg of uh, this animal. Um, so unfortunately, uh, you know, most animals are not strong enough to be able to break it, but giraffe are. And because uh, they're often, these snares are anchored to a tree or a large log. Um, but this big adult male giraffe uh, obviously walked away from it. And this is where obviously our team, the GCF and the Uganda Wildlife Authority mobile veterinary team come in. 
We drive around, we locate these animals, and we're rescuing them in the field before it's too late. Team responds also to lots of reports that come in. So this is a great photo. So when we find a giraffe, what do we do? We have to have veterinarians. They use a drug, a really potent drug, what's called an opioid, or it's called M99, or etorphine is the drug. And they go in and they dart the giraffe. And once the giraffe gets a little bit shaky, they run around with ropes and they bring that giraffe down to the ground. Um, it doesn't look so great, but it's the best and safest method uh, for the giraffe to trip them safely on the ground and it allows them to the giraffe to fall and also get our team on top of it. You'll see the next slide. Um, and then our team can hold the giraffe down safely and start working on the animal. And you can see it's got a blindfold on, it's got earplugs in its ear. So it's as calm as possible as it can be. A reversal drug is in there and then they start to take off the snare. So once it's on the ground, we can start immediately working on it. It's safe, it's restrained, and importantly, people are safe as well. Next slide. So we use a pair of bolt cutters. It's normally the easiest way, or it could be some uh, shears. Uh, we lift up the uh, actual snare, we cut it. Uh, we can use a special hook as well um, if we've got one. It's important so we're not trying to damage the skin or the wound anymore. You can see that this uh, example here is actually quite a good one. Uh, we got to this giraffe before the snare caused too many problems. Next slide. So once we have the giraffe down, you can see the line around the leg there. That's where the snare has come off. Now our team go in, they scrub with an antibiotic wash. Um, put in a long-lasting antibiotic injection to stop any inflammation. And all of this is also to help pain that the giraffe may be having. So there's no doubt we're kept very busy once we've got the giraffe down um, to make it safe before we want to get it back up again. Next slide. So once we've removed the wire and we've cleaned the wound, uh, we want to take off the the, the, you know, the head fold, uh, the head, uh, what's it called, harness, uh, to make sure that the animal comes. Uh, he took a bit of time. He's, you know, he's a big lad, and there's no doubt, it, you know, it's a little bit harder for him to get up. But, uh, you know, you want also for them to, you know, do it in their own time and do it safely. So this bull, if we see the next slide, he got up. You can see the photo on the left, and then he started to walk off. And it's quite nice when... Uh, you know, when they look back on you. It's, uh, it's one of those things Sarah always says, you know, it's one of her greatest feelings that as she gets up, giraffe looks back, kind of a thank you. Um, maybe it's a little confused about the whole situation and then off it goes into the wilderness. And it's one of the most amazing feelings. And, you know, to have your hands on the giraffe and be able to make, you know, true conservation actions directly is awesome. Next slide. So while we mainly focus on giraffe, um, that's obviously you know, the Giraffe Conservation Foundation. There's a number of other animals unfortunately snared at the same time. And, you know, we are not indiscriminate. We're there to help any and every animal that we can in the park. And this ranges from this heart of beast here. If you look at the next slide, it could be a lion. And then the next slide, or an elephant. So in the park, there is lots of different animals that unfortunately are getting affected, but we feel that over the last couple of years of running this program collaboratively, we've been able to save hundreds and hundreds of lives. And this is really an amazing feeling, especially, as I mentioned earlier, that the majority of the critically endangered Nubian giraffe live inside Murchison Falls National Park. Next slide. So this is a great infographic. Um, it's a little bit outdated, uh, but it shows in 2019-20 uh, what we did and who our team was. So you can see that, you know, we had a number of team members on the ground. This is together with Ugandan Wildlife Authority. Uh, we travelled quite a few kilometres in that park. That's 20,000, and that was just that one year. So you can double it, what we've been doing already this year. Uh, we removed X number, 649 uh, snares uh, from the wild, and now we can almost triple that, what we've actually taken directly out of the wild, and that's really awesome. But I think one of the most exciting things is that today, you know, we are now over 300 animals that we have saved, and that includes specifically 186 giraffe that we've been able to de-snare. Um, you know, this team really does an incredible job, and it's, it's made a huge impact on wildlife conservation in Murchison Falls, 
And truly, you know, it's been the backbone of how the Uganda Wildlife Authority has been able to improve their conservation efforts in the country. Next slide, please. So I wanted to say, you know, thank you very much for, uh, you know, joining us, learning more about how we at GCF tackle the issue of poaching, specifically it's one giraffe at a time. 